Good morning, millennials. Welcome back <laughs> to the morning toast. Happy Thursday. Happy what should be the fourth episode of the week, but it's only the second because, and I'm so glad this worked out perfectly. I'm so glad that you were scheduled to be the co host today because we have to come on and discuss what we've been through. Yes. So Ben is here. He was already scheduled to be here. But before we dive in and do anything, like, we have something to say. We've been hit. No, we've seen hell. Our the home. devil entered <laughs> my body. Our home was hit earlier this week <laughs> with the Noto virus, which apparently is a thing that everyone knows about. We didn't know. It's like the seasonal stomach flu, but apparently this year's is a real bitch. We, okay, so over the weekend, <laughs> we went out on Saturday. Saturday night, we go to bed, and Ben is up all night, both ends. And we're like, what the fuck? Honestly, I didn't really take it seriously. I was going to say, we're not anything. Claudia is asleep <laughs> as I am hurling, shitting. Like, it's li- bad. Like, again, I can't stress enough. She said both ends, both ends. And so I thought it was food poisoning. So I was more than happy to, like, you know, help when I woke up. I was very helpful. Yes, you were. When you woke up, you were helpful. I wasn't worried about, you know, getting anything from you because I thought it was fucking food poisoning. Yes, it was not. And then Monday, after the show, I'm like sitting here typing, like putting an episode up, and I feel as though I've been hit by a bus. I'm like, oh my God, I have to go home. So I'm in the Uber with like my head hanging out the window because like I needed fresh air. I'm like, I think I'm going to vomit. And I get home and I literally collapse in my bed for four hours. I just fell asleep, which is, I mean, I love to nap, but that's insane, like Mm -hmm. one o'clock. And I woke up at five o'clock and it was over. Like Mm -hmm. it had started, the devil had entered me as well. And my, like, I just can't. And it was literally 36 hours of nonstop torture. I haven't had a, I mean, I must look, we must look so thin. Like what we've been through. I haven't eaten a full meal seriously since Sunday. I lost 12 pounds. It's so crazy. I actually, if you look at my Google search, it's literally how to use a virus to start a diet. Jumpstart a diet. Like how to use it to jumpstart and leave the weight off. And what I read is that you can't puke fat. So like that. That doesn't like, it's not like really a thing. No, like it's you not. Get it back. Like we will but, bounce back to our original weights. Yeah. No, but when I tell you, again, I've been, t- I've been instructed not to get too graphic. Because what so we witnessed I will, in so, each other this weekend. So I will not get overly graphic. But what I will say is that at one point, early Saturday morning, six in the morning, I'm hurled over the toilet and all of a sudden. Stop, stop. I just... Take a stop, huge... stop, 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 hey, stop, seriously, stop, 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 stop. Like, that's too much. I told you not to get too graphic, and that's the most graphic part of it. Mm-hmm. So what, what are you doing? Dump. Ben. <laughs> no. On, what is that thing called? No, just shut up. Seriously, shut up. Shut the up. floor. Ben, shut up. <laughs> it was just, we've seen things in each other that we can never unsee. No, we can't. I do feel as though our marriage is stronger than ever. It is. And just know that there were, you know, lots of clothing, lots of towels, lots of garbage bags, lots of lots of heating pads that we had to throw out. That's let's just stay, stick with that. Fine. I think that's a good assessment of everyone needing to know what went yes, down. Yes. Yes. Rest I'm, in peace to that heating pad. Just it know, really it didn't deserve what no, it got. What you did and then by the way, Ben ruined the heating pad. I love that you're literally talking in circles around it. Yeah, of course. I shit on the heating pad. <laughs> she gave me a heating pad shut to up, help me. I up. woke up. <laughs> I woke up. Shut up. And I shit on it. So shut up. (laughs) Ben, by the way, I have like a $60 heating pad that's so big. Ben ruined it. And when I thought he had food poisoning, I was like, you know what? I'll get myself another one and it'll be okay. Then I had to go through the devil's disease without my fucking heating pad. No, you had a heating pad. You got me a shitty one from Walgreens that was literally, literally four inches by four inches. My heating pad at home is literally like... 36 by 36. No, it's an unbelievable heating pad. The Sickening. One have. Yeah, it was ruined. It's like as big as this couch. It's yeah, huge. It's huge. And it was ruined. So to go through the Noto virus without my stupid heating pad, like that was crippling. I'm just saying people are like, COVID, Noto. Ben, I was thinking the same thing. The way that the entire like economy world shut down for COVID, like this is worse. This like, is worse. And apparently this happens every year. Yeah. And literally just by being in the same room as someone transferred, yeah. not six feet, 600 feet transferred. It was, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, this is what we should be shutting down for as well. Like, yeah. And this the way, is crippling. And literally the, the, the out both ends of it all, I promise 
could kill every every senior citizen. Uh, they, uh, they're dead. They uh, get this, they're dead. You guys, like, okay, so here's the thing. This is an informative podcast. So the first thing I want to say is that if someone in your household is, like, starting to feel nauseous, like, it's not food poisoning, it's highly contagious, and hunker down, first of all. I didn't even know this thing existed. Like, if I had known, I would have just, like, approached it differently. I had no idea. The second thing I want to tell you, like, if it does, and I now know people who are getting it and everyone's DMing me, so here is, like, my number one tip, and it's such a good tip, and unfortunately I had to learn from you not having this tip. If you catch this virus and you find yourself, like, having to puke, please do yourself a favor and sit on the toilet while you puke. Puke into a garbage bag, a garbage bin, lit- puke on the floor. Literally do anything else. Do not remove your ass <laughs> from the toilet because you will regret it. Okay, that's all I have to say. And just justice for the girls out there who go through this virus while on their period. Because the whole thing, the time I was thinking, like, if I had my period right now, like, I would just, I would, I would not be okay. Yes. And Dramamine. Amodium. Amodium. Pedialyte. Yeah, see, I have a problem with Pedialyte. I know you do. You were like watering down your Pedialyte. Pedialyte is so sugary. It's like disgusting. No, but you can get electrolytes. Electrolytes are like salt. Electrolytes aren't sugar. I don't think electrolytes are salt. Oh, really? Yeah. Are they? Okay. Google it. Google it. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure electrolytes are salt. No, they're like neutrons, you know? Protons. Jimmy's? Are they? Salt. Is it salt? No. Oh, you're so smart. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I am. They're definitely not fruit punch. Well, it was strawberry flavored Pedialyte. Yeah, it was for it kids. Was, yeah, it was way too much. I thought it tasted disgusting. And I need Pedialyte to make a watered down version that has just as much electrolytes, but is drinkable. They do. They have like Pedialyte light. They have like Pedialyte popsicles. Oh, they do? Yeah, they have like a ton of different. I just got the only one that GoPuff had because like we were fucking desperate. Mm, yeah. So you're welcome, by yeah, the way. True. Also, shout out GoPuff. Uh, shout out GoPuff. Literally, life saving technology. 15 minutes, I got the Imodium. Yeah. 15 minutes, I got the Dramamine. Yeah. Yeah. 15 minutes, I got the Saltines. 15 minutes, you could get the Spritz. In California. And Only. Florida. Only. Okay. For now. For now. For now. Um, okay. So I feel as though we've grossed everyone out enough. That is where we were at. I apologize for missing both episodes of The Toast. Like, of course, Jackie leaves it up to me to do The Toast, and I get the stomach flu. But I'm back. I'm not going to lie. I'm not 100%, but I can now sit here for an hour and not crap my pants. So that's why we're here. Yeah. Thank you to everyone. I'm really sorry for missing both episodes, but we're back. And we are going to do Dear Toasters today because we were supposed to do it on Wednesday's episode. So Ben is going to join me. We've got lots of news since it's been a few days. We've got Dear Toasters, and we've got Ben. And honestly, that's all we need. Agreed. And the fact that you're even apologizing, if you guys could see her, this woman was sick as a dog. Did you feel bad for me? Here's the deal. I didn't feel... No, no. I felt bad for you, Because you gave it to me. I felt... See, this is the narrative that I don't like. You gave it to me. Like, but somebody gave it to me. Yeah, of course. But you brought it into our house. Like, what were you doing on Saturday that you... Like, what, where were you hanging out that you picked we up the disease? We were together. Yeah, exactly. What were you doing? I don't know. Being together. No, you brought it home. Maybe you picked it up, gave it to me, and then I gave it back to you. And the first time you yeah. got it, <laughs> yeah. you didn't have symptoms. Yeah. That's what happened. Okay. That's what happened. Okay. Um, you brought it home. Thank you so much. And... Anything else you want to say about the disease before we go? No, it's a terrible disease. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm still like 80%. It's just, it really takes your soul. Oh, it crushes it, your it, spirit. It crushes, it, it's gone. It's gone. My spirit is gone. My will to live, like, it was just awful. No, it's bad. Oh, it's bad. And also, like, there's a real joy in life when you feel like you're going to have, like, a nice fart. Like, it's really, <laughs> it's really nice to fart. Like, if you need to fart, fart. Yeah. Everybody. If farting Everybody is great for you, it's healthy. If you need a fart, it feels great. Sometimes a fart can change your day around. And sometimes, and not sometimes, now this disease has taken the fart from me because now I'm afraid every single time I'm like, oh, that's a fart. Nope, maybe you're shitting no, your pants. No, you're questioning every fart now. I'm questioning every fart. I'm so sorry. This disease made me question every fart. You'll get now. your spirit back. Don't worry. I don't know. I think you will. I'll never fart the same. We're different people, like 100%. We are. (laughs) Um, But we have enough of a spirit to do today's show. Um, Thank you, Ben, for joining us again. The last time you were here, the reviews were rave. Mm. They always are. And when Josh Peck was here on Friday, so many people, first of all, they love the episode. And they also said, like, they totally see how you and Josh Peck are best friends because you guys, we got so many comments saying how similar you guys were. Yeah, I mean, Josh is the best. The best. Number one. You going to read his book? Of course. When? I don't know. Look, I don't read books. I read Claudia's book. That was the first book that I read since I read half 
of what's that uh, book that turned into a uh, curious incident of the dog in the middle of the night. I read the curious incident of the dog in the night. Great book. You only read half. No, I think I read the whole thing. Who ended up killing the dog? I don't remember. The guy's dad. Yeah, I remember. And that, then there was a wonderful Broadway show that Claudia said she hated. Uh, ben said he saw this Broadway show. He's like, remember that book, Curious Incident? They turned it into a Broadway show. You guys should see it. So what do we do? We buy tickets for the whole family. We're sitting in this play and we're like, we have been hoodwinked. <laughs> this is <laughs> trash. So that's the last time we ever take a Broadway recommendation from you. Interesting. Um, okay, let's dive in because we've got a lot to cover. In today's, no, uh, how does it go? Here are the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> Beat the crunch. So annoying. Um, and today's episode is brought to you by Caraway. It's time to ditch the chemicals with Caraway's home, Caraway Homes' non toxic cookware and bakeware collections so you can make healthier cooking a piece of cake. Caraway's home, Caraway Homes' non toxic kitchenwares are all designed for the modern home and, a fe- and they feature a chemical free ceramic coating so food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard to pronounce compound will leach into your healthy ingredients. So, Caraway Home is so great because it's non toxic, but also the reason why I love it is because it's sickeningly stunning. They have gorgeous cookware, so many colors. Every time they drop a color, it's literally like Balenciaga. Um, I have the frying pan. I have a bunch of their products. They're really, really great. They work super well, super easy to clean and non-toxic. So, so it's great to, for, for your family and to bring into your home. Visit carawayhome.com slash toast to take advantage of this limited time offer of 10% off your next purchase. The deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome, C-A-R-A-W-A-Y home.com slash toast or use code toast at checkout. Caraway is non-toxic cookware made modern Non-toxic, easy cooking, it's naturally slick surface, means minimal oil or butter for a slide off the pan, eggs, and easy cleaning. Today's episode is also brought to you by Sunbasket. Sunbasket delivers the joys of eating with bold flavors, organic produce, and sustainable seafood and meats. Their award-winning chefs are constantly innovating with new recipes and global tastes to keep it interesting each week with dozens of options. You can put dinner on autopilot with easy-to-prep meal kits that impress for date night or win over the picky eaters in your family. Whether you eat vegetarian, paleo, gluten-free, or low-carb slash high-protein, Sunbasket has something to check every box. Set up weekly delivery and skip a week when you need to. It's simple, easy, and you'll love it. Old habits die hard, so if you're looking to update your meal time, if that's like something you want to do in the new year, start cooking more, whether it's to save money from ordering in or just trying to eat healthier, try Sunbasket. A lot of the meals are super delicious, and they're very, very specific. So if you have like strict dietary needs, which we are a very strict dietary needed household, um, you'll find something that you like on Sunbasket for your kids or for you. And right now, Sunbasket is offering $90 off and a free gift mm. when you order. Just go to sunbasket.com slash toast and enter the promo code toast at checkout. That's S-U-N-B-A-S-K-E-T dot com slash toast and enter promo code toast. Okay. Are you ready for the Fast Five Stories, Pops? I'm ready. All right. I'm ready, Freddy. First up, the big news is that Kylie Jenner has changed the name of her baby. Did you know that? Yeah. Didn't that happen like a couple days ago? Yeah, well, we haven't done the show since oh, Monday. True, true, true. true. Yeah, so Kylie Jenner that. shares a new photo of her baby boy, boy before announcing that his name is no longer Wolf. Yeah. So she posted this really, really sweet um, like documentary that they put together. They did it for Stormy too. On her YouTube channel, it was really sweet. Like I did find myself tearing up when all the sisters were just like talking to the camera, giving Kylie advice. And then she wrote... FYI, our son's name isn't Wolf anymore. Emoji, emoji. We just really didn't feel like it was him. Just wanted to share because I keep seeing Wolf everywhere. Mm. Uh, yeah, you keep seeing Wolf everywhere because you told us that was his name and then you didn't tell us you changed it. So, of course, that's what we're going to say. Like, totally. You tell us it's the kid's name. We're going to go with that. Correct. So, I feel like this, like, we need to normalize changing your mind. Yeah. It's not that crazy. We did it. Right. We, we got our beautiful Theo. I looked at him and I said, because, again, by the way, I think that this, it's a lovely origin story, his name. We call each other Moof, Moofy. So Mufan. it was a perfect name for our son, Moofy. Moofy. But obviously, that's a horrific name <laughs> for a dog. So after naming him Moofy, we switched to Theo because he is obviously a Theo. Yeah, that was like a weird thing we did. Movie. It was, it was. But, but normalized changing normal- your mind. And that was with a dog. Like imagine a, a real human Oh my God, I'll never look at you the same. No, but you know what I mean. That was with a dog. No, but like a a child's name follows them throughout their life. It has so much meaning. It's like how people perceive them. Sometimes kids get bullied. Ben Soccer, like, you know? Yeah. Do you know how much Theo would have been bullied if his name was Moofy? He's a completely different dog. Bullied by who? That dog that tried to 
hurt him at the park. Remember that one time? No. Remember when Theo yes. was under siege? Yes, that was not good. That red um, rocket almost went right in his booty. Yeah. That was terrible. Um, but with a kid, like, it's really important. And so when we were, like, helping Jackie pick out names for Harry, like, it's such a huge undertaking. Like, I don't know how you name a child. It's also so stressful. Like, every single time I said a name... Like, I just know that it was bothering them. Yeah, like, totally. Like, like they, very tense. Like, like, parents don't really want your recommendations on names. Like, it's a discussion, but, like, it's, like, it's their child. It's their so decision. True. Like, you know? So true. No, it's like, so true. Like, it's, like, oh, we were talking about it, but, like, I don't think our opinions had any weight. No, not Honestly, at all. the opposite. If I recommended a name. They automatically hated gone. it. Gone. Yeah, no, you're 100% Oh, Ben's wreck? Right. Nope. I also think, like, it is <clears throat> us overstepping to, like, suggest names. For you know? sure. It's not our kid. No. Not what, on our business. Actually, I was going to ask you. <clears throat> what, Excuse me. The coughing? Sorry. I forgot to take my Zyrtec this morning. Oh. No, really. Zyrtec, please send me more. I don't want you to say, like, what names you like. Because, like, people are always stealing names. But, like, what names do you like? Mm. Are you, like, Boy a name? girl. Let's go. Oh, no. By the way, I can't. People are going to steal it. Yeah. But do you have, like, names in your I have back? some names that I like. You do? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I have some names that I like. Give me one. No, we we like the same names. We do? We've spoken about some names. Okay. We're on the same name length. Yeah, totally, totally. Trademark that. Name length. Name length. Um, so, happy for Kylie. Normalize changing your mind. These are really big decisions to make, and sometimes you name your kid, and the kid comes out, and it's like, you're not a wolf. No. But, like, but by the way, no one has ever birthed a child, and they were a wolf. Yeah. It's such, like, an intense name. Yeah. Like... I'm sorry. I agree. You, you should be able to be renamed Wolf at like the age of 16. Yeah, no, it's like, grow up. Are you a wolf or are you not a wolf? Because if you are, then your name could be Wolf. You can't grow into a wolf. No, yeah. Like you either are. Or you're not. I completely agree. Yeah, it's a really crazy name. So. And there's only one wolf in the world. Do we know what name they've Taylor chosen? Lautner. No, that's the thing. She hasn't oh, told yeah. us yet. Yeah, that is the only wolf. Taylor Lautner is the only wolf. Yeah. Um, but she hasn't told us the new name and I'm just like quaking. Like, what is it? Like, is she going to stick with the same, like, intense vibe? Or maybe he's not an intense child. You know, maybe he's, like, super peaceful. So his name will be, like, you know, Solomon. You know what's interesting? They named their daughter Stormy. And Stormy, when you think about it, is an intense word. Storm. But they put the I, softened it, and now it's, like, a sweet word. So maybe they were planning on doing the same with Wolf, where it was, like, an intense word, but... Make it less intense. That's an interesting you know? analysis. I never thought of it that you know, way. Like maybe like take thunder. The, take the take but with the a fe- silent K. <laughs> yeah, take the fear out of Wolf. Maybe it was W O L P H. Ooh, even though she did say W O L F. Yeah, I mean she should have listened to me. But uh, that's stunning. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good take. I like it. Yeah. Um, so we'll just be sitting here with you know our. Fingers up our ass waiting for her to tell us the new name. I'm not doing that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's go into some conservatorship news. I know you're a really big Ooh. fan of Amanda Bynes. Um, and she has been flooded. Sorry. I'm not a big fan of Amanda Bynes, but I do often reference you're her. You're not? I was a fan. This new Amanda. Ben, don't be mean. She's going through a hard time. You really think so? Yes. Well, listen, I know you haven't been keeping up, but let me tell you. She's been flooded with TV offers. Now her conservatorship has ended. So she's been in a conservatorship like Britney Spears. Mm. Like, look at us always putting women in boxes. Like, do you know any men in a conservatorship? No. Wendy Williams is about to be put in one. Always with the successful women. Mm. So a different kind of Amanda show could be on the way. Anyone and everyone in the TV industry has been trying to get a hold of Amanda Bynes after the termination of her conservatorship, her lawyer revealed on Wednesday. He said, while Amanda's being flooded with interview offers, most of which came pouring in over the last few days, she's not ready to talk and is laying low for a while. Her lawyer shared that several production companies have also reached out to Amanda's team about filming documentaries or a potential reality show on her life moving forward. Um, So uh, according to her lawyer, the New York Times, LA Times, Wall Street Journal, Vanity Fair, Elle, CBS News, Gail King, and Logan Paul (laughs) are among (laughs) those who have pitched interviews with the former actress. That's according to TMZ. Um, and she hasn't allegedly been offered any book deals, even though that will definitely be coming soon. So the Superior Court judge agreed to end her conservatorship um, of her and her estate nearly nine years after it was established to protect the star from her struggles with mental health and substance abuse. In the last several years, she said, I've been working hard to improve my health so that I can live and work independently, and I will continue to prioritize my well-being in the next chapter. I'm excited about my upcoming endeavors, including my fragrance line, and I look forward to sharing more when I can. To me, Amanda Bynes is like 
we always we make an example out of like Britney Spears and I feel like not a lot of people talk about Amanda Bynes because she kind of like really went low key under the radar. I didn't even know she was in a conservatorship. No, I just thought that she was batshit crazy. But she's not like she was she went through a hard time and like literally her freedom was taken away. But the good thing about this is from what I understand is that like her family's totally on her side and she's like on good terms. Whereas like with Britney, her family was like taking advantage of her and draining her money and mm. they were the ones trying to keep her in the conservatorship. Mm. So I'm really happy. I hope she's in a good place. Like I I think like she I was talking about this with Josh Peck on Friday. She like we were robbed of one of the greatest comedic actresses of our generation. Loved her. Because I think like the media was so mean to her, it got to her her, yeah. her mental health like was not a priority for her team and like I just think we were so robbed of an Amanda Bynes career yeah your favorite movie she's the man she's the man the best movie mm -hmm. and like if you watch it and it's like a funny silly movie but if you watch it like keeping a keen eye on Amanda Bynes like it's Oscar worthy like and what was that movie with uh, where she's, she's a princess uh, and her no her dad is a is the like king of England or yes. whatever um, what a girl wants oh, what great a movie. girl wants also great what movie. a girl great movie like she had banger after banger after banger yeah, I mean banger. she's the same as Hilary Duff like what's the except funnier no she's in my opinion like more of a star than Hilary Duff yeah she could have been mm -hmm. she could have been so honestly like as much as I would love to see her a return to the screen like I just want peace for Amanda Bynes like I just want her you know to have her money and I hope she can just like retire peacefully fall in love take care of her mental health like I just I'm really happy about this the most shocking part about what you read is that she's launching a fragrance line. Yeah. And it's like, what is wrong with people that are pitching celebrities fragrance lines? Like, who's going to buy the Amanda Bynes post-conservatorship fragrance? Well, the thing Why can't is, you make something that's actually unique to her? The thing is, is that I think Amanda Bynes just might be, like, like stunted a little in... Like, when she came up, when she was, like, 16, 17, 18, and she was a huge star, fragrances... We're making yeah. billions of dollars. Kim Kardashian, every celebrity had, had a fragrance. Like the first big thing Kim ever did after, like outside of her sisters, was a fragrance. Like there was a time where fragrances were literally like gold mines. Yeah. So I think that because she hasn't worked in a while and she's been like in this conservatorship, I think she might be stunted a little and just like where she thinks like celebrity brands are and maybe she's like still stuck in like the 2000s. That's what I think. I, I think that there's no shot that that was her idea. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I hope she's in charge of her own business now. Like, There's no way that she said, end conservatorship, I'm launching a fragrance. I actually, like, I could see that for Amanda. She's not like other girls. Interesting. I love her. Like, I will buy the fragrance. I, I will support. Her too. Well, that's nice of you. Yeah. I won't be buying the fragrance. But if she launched, I don't know, a soccer brand. Yeah, totally. Like a line know, of jerseys. Line yeah. of jerseys. An from, homage to She's the Man. Yeah, like bring back the old Amanda. Like, Welcome to Illyria. Hold on. <laughs> welcome to Illyria. Welcome, 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 welcome to Illyria. It's a gorgeous instrument. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. Where did you get it? Uh, it was a gift, actually. Thank you so much. And it's from um, Tree Works, made in Nashville, Tennessee, USA. It's we awesome. love supporting USA companies. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, so yes, Amanda Bynes is free. Mm. We look forward to seeing what she does, supporting her and giving yes. her all of our love and support. Yes. You agree? Love her. Okay. Rooting for her. I don't know why I thought you were like the biggest Amanda Bynes fan. Cause you grew up on Amanda okay. show. Like I loved Amanda Bynes. Then Amanda Bynes seemingly fell off a cliff. I feel terrible now understanding what she went through, what she went through. Uh, but it certainly shook. I haven't, I haven't thought like, my Amanda Bynes is stuck 12 years right, ago. Right, right. Like, there's no, I haven't heard about her. Like, at least Britney's struggles were very so public. public, which made us constantly question, Everything. is she okay? Is it her? Is it her family? Yep. What's going on? 100%. And now we've led sort of to... A this place, huge this, movement. This huge there movement. There was a, a exactly. hashtag. But no, Amanda, Amanda Bynes like really fell by just, the wayside. She just fell off a cliff. No, and No like, one spoke about her. Nobody heard of her. I randomly just saw a video of her with blue hair and like a bull nose ring. Yeah, and she and had like, like a heart tattoo on her face. And, and she just like looked, again, like different. do you, but looked completely different. And and you can anybody can change their vibe, but yeah, but she just didn't feel like funny or right. No, it was like, like it's not funny anymore. It's not funny anymore. Yeah, it felt very dark. Um. Okay. Well, rooting for her always, always rooting for Amanda. But like, come on, fragrances. 
And also, like, if you're looking for an interview, like, we will have you at the morning test. Um, <laughs> all right, next up, page six. This is, like, huge news. I don't know if you give a shit, but Bravo is rebooting Real Housewives of New York with a new cast. Oh, I care. And a Completely new cast? And a second show with ex-housewives. Ah. So if you haven't been keeping up, like, the Real Housewives of New York has just been slowly unraveling. Like, it went from... A decent show, no, it went from a great show to a decent show to like a bad show to an unwatchable show to a show that was so low in ratings that Bravo didn't even air, didn't even film a reunion with them. Like they didn't even think it was worth wow. spending the money. Like it was just so messy. It was so bad. And so they, they're looking. And so a lot with a lot of the OG shows like The Real Housewives of Orange County, they've been on for so long that a lot of them are getting to this place where it's like trash like it's unwatchable and they're doing different things with orange county they brought back someone who was beloved they cut a few people added some new people got rid of some ogs and like it's not great but it's better but i don't think they were going to take that approach with new york because it wasn't a big enough turnaround in ratings and and, in entertainment so now what they've decided to do is to get rid of everyone start with a new cast they said they're looking for people um who are potentially related people who are actually friends i don't know who that's going to be. But then they're also going to keep, because there's so many gems on the show. Ramona, people love. Sonia, Luann, ex-housewives like Dorinda, Jill Zarin, people feel very connected to. They're going to have a second show, like a spinoff for all the old spinsters. Now, while this sounds like a good idea, I'm not really sure how the, the cure for a show with low ratings is to start two shows. Like, you can barely get good ratings for one show. Now you're going to do two? Yeah. I'm not sure. Mm. And the second show, like, sounds like they just don't want to fire all those ladies, so they're just going to give them some show. Maybe it'll be on Peacock. Peacock has actually been really good for Bravo. It's a very strange story. Yeah, I, I don't think this is the answer, honestly. It's strange because if you want high ratings, just bring on, like, one mega New York person. But I guess maybe they didn't want to, maybe, like, the real... But Popular they, people like don't want to do a show with no, like these crazies. It's very hard to get women in New York. Like the Real Housewives of New York at the beginning, it really they did a good job with some of the women getting like legit rich people. Like Luanda Lesseps, we know her now as like mm. cabaret star who gets kicked out of bars. But when she was on the show, she was an actual count mm. countess. Excuse me. Mm. Her husband was a count. They had a stunning townhouse on the Upper East Side, like huge estate in the Hamptons, a driver. Things have changed, and now, like, all the women on the show are essentially has-beens. Like, Sonia Morgan was married to J.P. Morgan's grandson, but is not anymore. And she has a townhouse that's, like, being held together by a thread. It's, like, not real rich New Yorkers, because the actual, like, old money people in New York, they don't want to be on the show. Of course not. It's trash. Yeah. So it's impossible for them to cast. They should really get some influencers. Like, they should get the Charnis girls, like something Navy and her sisters. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like, their moms, they're married... They're very successful in their own right. They're sisters. Like, they would be great. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know what they're going to do. Jackie. Jackie, yes. Harry, yeah. Jackie would never, but... No, but, like, but, but like, by the way, she would never until she got an offer. No, she would literally never. You got to think about it. Jackie would never. She wouldn't even think about it. No, like, 100% not. I would think about it, but she wouldn't. She wouldn't even think about it. No. Interesting. No, like, 100% no. But so, like, they just need fresh, they need new. This is a problem that Housewives as an industry is running into. Like, they're kind of aging out. Like, people, like, Olivia was the first person on the planet to watch Housewives. She was obsessed, and she hasn't watched in years. Like, it's just, it's dry, it's kind of stale. Even when it's good, it's not, like, great. And I just don't think that this is the answer. I do think it's, what they did with Real Housewives of Miami was great. Real Housewives of Miami was a show that was on Bravo for, two, like, two or three seasons. No, three, maybe three or four. Um, it was good. It didn't have like huge ratings, but it was really good. It got canceled, obviously. And then eight years later, they brought it back on Pe Peacock. Larsa Pippen's on it. They got sick like people, actual money. And it's really good. Yeah, but it's it's funny. Like to, if you think about it in like a sports analogy, athletes don't play forever. Right. They get replaced by young, talented athletes. Like, yeah. You retire. Like the, the I think I think the biggest problem is that these if, if these women are past their time... No, you're being they, ageist. It's not why about that. Why am I being ageist? Because it's not about age. It's really not. Like, no. some of the best housewives are in their 60s, and the women who are in their 30s are trash. It's not about age. It's really not. It's about, first of all, it's about money. Like, when you come onto the show, and you have the biggest house, the nicest cars, like, it gives you status. And for some reason, in the last couple of years, Bravo has not been able to cast women with real money. Mm -hmm. It's all a facade, and then they get into legal trouble. Jen Shaw, Teresa Judice, mm -hmm. Erica Jane, like... Mm -hmm. They get into this legal trouble. Um, so 
I think the first thing is money. And it really doesn't have to do with age. Like, hate her or love her, Lisa Vanderpump was one of the biggest pot-stirring bitches in the country. And she's the oldest housewife. She was in her 60s. I wasn't implying age. I was saying that everybody has a, a moment in time. Oh, okay. And it's very difficult to keep a moment in time for more than 10 years. Yeah, agreed. Move on. Like, agreed. Like, get, get, a, so, get a fresh face. Yeah. Again, that person can be 80 and cool. But there's just so much, like, sentiment. Like, we feel so connected. Like, they don't want to let go of Ramona, even though people have problems with her and she's not great anymore. You're connected. Sorry. No, I know. No, I mean, you'll still keep up with her. Yeah. You can see her other places. Yeah. Maybe what they do is they start bringing OG Housewives to reunions. Like, there's a new New, new York... New York Housewives. What is that? New York Housewives? New York. Yeah, Housewives, oh Housewives of New York. You know when you say a word? 100%. And you're like, is that it? Like, yeah. is the a word? When you say a word that, so many times, it's like garage, garage, that literally garage. Just, that literally just happened to me? Yeah. Um, but why can't they bring her, like, back on, like, a future reunion show? Like, you have, like, the OG Housewife there. Yeah, there's a way to keep the women. Like, maybe she's, like, hosting the reunion. Well, no, but I know what you mean. Yeah, they keep, like, Housewives... Who are no longer on the show? They come on Watch Happens Live. They do these big Watch yeah. Happens Live in LA. Keep specials. them in the ecosystem. Yeah, they now they're doing Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip with old uh, Real Housewives in the Berkshires. Yeah, you're right. They could keep them in, in the without stratosphere. keeping them in the main show. Agreed. You're right. I just don't. I don't think this is the answer for Bravo. I don't. But I'm I'm happy that they're trying out different things for all mm. these franchises that are like starting to expire. Yeah. And we'll see what works. OC didn't really work. It worked fine, but not great. I don't know if this is going to work, so we'll see what works. I think what, what really worked was with Real Housewives of Miami. Um, all right. Are you ready for the next story? Yeah. Sorry. I have a bit, bit of a crick in my neck. Do you want to... I'm going to do an ad if you want to get up and like walk around. Yeah. I also could really use a Zyrtec. So I'm just going to... Well, you do the ad. I'm just going to get some Advil and a Zyrtec. Oh, yeah. Go, go, go. Yeah, okay, cool. But you really only have like 60 seconds, so make, oh. it, make it quick. Today's episode is brought to you by Bowl and Branch. No one wants to cut corners on what's important, and few things matter more than good night's rest. Bowl and Branch signature sheets feel so soft and light, you'll forget you're not actually sleeping on a cloud. And they're sustainably made for uncompromising quality from field to factory. The signature hem sheets from Bowl and Branch are a bestseller for a reason. They're buttery soft, lightweight, organic cotton in a classic sateen weave for sheets that get softer over time. It's not too hot, it's not too cool, it's the perfect year-round sheets for most sleepers. Bowl and Branch focuses on quality over quantity, so there's no inflated thread counts because more isn't always better. So Bowl and Branch, the signature hem sheets, that's what we have at our house. I'm a big Bowl and Branch girly. All my sheets, my throw blankets, everything I have is from Bowl and Branch. I'm a big fan. Um, Rach Parcell uses them, so like if it's good enough for Rach. You can experience the best sheets you've ever felt at bowlandbranch.com. Get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use promo code TOAST to check out. That's Bowl and Branch, B O L L A N D, branch.com, promo code TOAST. Those are our sheets? Yeah, that's what we have. Amazing. I'm okay. I think you'll like this next story from The Hollywood Reporter. I see, I'm not seeing a lot of people talk about this. Mm. Kevin and Frankie Jonas are to host a celebrity relative reality show for ABC called Claim to Fame. It will feature 12 non-celebrities looking to make their own names and win a cash prize. So the network has greenlit Claim to Fame, a competition show in which 12 people related to celebrities, quote, step outside their famous family member's shadow and live together under one roof, concealing their identity and lineage in the quest for their own fame and fortune. Brothers Kevin and Frankie Jonas will host the show, which come from the Love is Blind producers, Kinetic Content, and Disney's television, um, and Walt Disney. So Claim to Fame will be a Big Brother-style competition in which 12 players are isolated from the outside world, compete in challenges, and form alliances to stay in the game. Keeping the identities of their famous relatives a secret will also be a key part of the gameplay. The show marks a return to Disney for Kevin Jonas, who, along with his brothers Nick and Joe, rose to fame in the 2000s with the help from Disney Channel. Um, I kind of think that this is, like, a really good idea. It's definitely interesting. Yeah, first so, of all... like, what I'm, is the game? Like, what is that, like... So, do you ever watch Big Brother? Mm. Me neither, but they put people in a house and there's all these like challenges and it's like mental warfare. You have to get other people eliminated while also creating alliances. And people really like it and it's okay. very interesting. So I think like having it be like celebrity offspring is really cool. By the way, this I, this like concept of people really liking shows, so we will like it. People really like Love is Blind. That's that true. show is trash. No, but big, I, have to, I have a feeling if I watched like Celebrity Big Brother, I would really like it. Okay. It honestly sounds like Celebrity Big Brother because... Most of the people in Celebrity Big Brother are not, like, 
really famous. It's like Frankie Grande, Ariana Grande's brother. By the way, this is also Celebrity Big Brother, but without needing to pay celebrities, but still being able to use their names. Totally. They literally are just hoodwinking everyone. Totally. It's like, I don't want to pay Nick and Jonas, so I'm going to pay Nick and Jonas. Kevin and Hoosie and... Nick and Jonas. What did I say? Q. Who's Nick and Jonas and Kevin and Hoosie? What did you just say? I don't want to pay Nick and Joe, so I'm going to pay right. Kevin and Frankie and nonstop talk about Nick and Joe. Right. No, no. You're right. This is kind of like a pulling the wool over everyone's eyes. Yeah. They literally cut the budget into half less. Yeah. <laughs> I also am really curious who they're going to cast. Like, is it going to be people like, okay, we know who Frankie Grande is, or is it going to be like actual people who have never been seen? Like, me, I heard, you know, Ashton Kutcher has a cousin, you know? That's who it's going to be. Yeah. It would be really funny if, like, six months later, something comes out in the news, like somebody lied about their right. relation to the celebrity. You know, I'll go on the show. I'm Sienna Miller's long-lost sister. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. That's actually really funny. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if the celebrities are going to be involved at all. Definitely. I think not, actually. I th maybe for, like, the winner. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I think it's... And I like that they have Frankie and um, Kevin hosting... It's fun. Because Frankie Grande has become like a major TikTok star in a recent couple of years. I think he has like 3 million followers. The Gen Zs love him, obviously. What is our generation? X. Millennials love Kevin. And I think that this is great. I think it's actually like a really good idea. And I actually might watch it. Watch Depending it. on who the people are. Like if I have no idea who they are, I might not. But if it's like, you know, I don't know why I keep thinking of Frankie Jonas. But like a relatively kind of known person. Like, who is a cousin of a celeb? Yeah, I don't know. Is it, like, total nobodies? I need more more clarity. I can't think of one. Yeah, no, me neither. And that makes sense, because yeah. they're a celebrity's cousin. <laughs> Why would you know? <laughs> um, okay. They, ha they have to be total nobodies. Yeah, I think so, too. So, like, who cares? So it's not even Celebrity Big Brother. It's just Big Brother with random people. Big Brother with random people. Who happen to be like loosely related. Loosely related. To like influencers and yeah, celebrities. Yeah, it's like one of those like my, my cousin's sister's boyfriend. Right. Like, Was in the army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. Um, well, best of luck. And mm. I'm happy that Frankie and, and Kevin are getting work outside Be of singing. Best of luck. Best of luck. All right. Our fifth and final story is some Jeffrey Epstein news. Mm. His pedophile island has hit the market. For $125 million. So his two private islands, commonly referred to as Pedophile Island, due to allegations that he sexually abused girls as, as young as age 11, is set to list for a whopping $125 million, the New York Post can confirm. It's located in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and they're known geographically as Great St. James and Little St. James. The islands have been fairly untouched since Epstein's death in 2019. That wasn't a suicide. Um <laughs> According to Epstein's estate lawyer, the proceeds from the sale are expected to go toward resolving any outstanding lawsuits, regular costs of uh, operating the island, and other fees including taxes, creditors, liens placed on the properties by the U.S. Virgin Islands Attorney General. And what's interesting is that Epstein purchased the Little St. James Island, which is over 70 acres, in 1998 for $7.9 million. Wow. And now it's worth 100 and what was it, 25, 195? 125 wow. yeah For, who the fuck would buy this like I, even if you really want uh, a private island like you're rich enough and you're shopping and it's oh the, there's a sale let's go to this one and it's obviously a little discounted because all the shit that went down there i don't think i could ever even though like it's it's pretty sickening like so one the u.s virgin islands is dog shit in compared. comparison to the british virgin so islands. true you're gonna spend your money go british you're right two it's not discounted it actually seems like it's a premium. Well, what are 70-acre islands going for now that, oh, have, actually, that have estates oh, and wait. mansions already built on it's it? It's a discount, you're right. It has to be it discounted. It has to be very discounted. No one would pay top dollar no. for this. No. The thing is, can you ever get the feeling or smell off the island? It's kind of like buying like a, a house that somebody was murdered in. Yeah, like it's a, worse. Like yeah. it, Even if you bulldoze it. It's creepy. Like, hearing the stories of the girls yeah, but, who would literally jump off the cliff to try and swim, and it was, like, sharks everywhere. Like, it was horrible. Yeah, but now that I am thinking about it, like a hotel chain, $125 million, you uh, turn that into a sickening property. I don't think any, like, any consumer would really feel comfortable spending money there. Like, it's so creepy. Maybe enough time I, hasn't I was passed. Gonna, I was going to say, I wonder if, like, okay, so now it's Pedo Island. 
once it's rebought, rebranded, most people don't know the coordinates of the island. Like right. they're just like they see like, oh, Marriott has a new property. Right. And they go. Right. They don't know what it was. Yeah. Like we don't know what was anything you know i'll be very interested to see like what happens here if you're right like an, uh, a marriott buys it i just don't think anyone wants a bad press like it's not worth having one good hotel to have like oh yeah we paid 125 dollars to pay off the problem jeffrey the problem Epstein's is the, taxes the problem is the press yeah if the press wasn't involved and somebody could just buy it and but i don't think anyone would even want that like it's so creepy it's creepy now i'm saying it's just it's land like I know. Before it was Pedo Island was probably like the most gorgeous, it's beautiful. Little St. Like, James. Yeah, it's just. It's so weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's so creepy. What a conundrum. I know. Discounted oh, island. And he has all these homes, like crazy estates. Like the one on the Upper East Side. Yeah. I think it's like 78th and Madison. Yeah. It's like this huge. Yeah. That's where he was arrested. Like yeah. where they found all this evidence, all these tapes. Like that's a stunning piece of architecture. It's literally like a, a landmark. It's one of these old, old townhouses. Like. Who the fuck would want to buy that? That should just turn into like a government building. Yeah, like there's just not, I don't think there's a buyer for these places. He has all these crazy estates, one in like Cleveland, like it's crazy. What if you turn it into like... And he didn't have kids, right? What if you turn it into like a school? Yeah, I mean... mm, No? A school? Yeah. I get what you're saying, but like... No. No? No, no, no. No, I meant more. Honestly, like it should be like a prison, like, like doing something for good. No, but you don't oh, want to waste an mean. island on a prison. No, you're right. It should be like a shelter, like something. Yeah. Yes, I know what you meant. Something yes. gorgeous and nice. Yeah. Like maybe you like. Yeah, I I understand. Yeah, I, no, I get but it. I understand what you're trying to say. Like trying to turn you know the bad fortune into good fortune. Yeah, like yeah. people would love a beautiful island. Yeah. Or like make it like an island for like people that can't afford an island. Yeah. No, like, I I know what you're saying. Like turn it around. Yeah. Turn it around. 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 Turn it around, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Turn the beat around. Love to hear percussion. Okay. Sorry, I'm just like obsessed with my little instrument. So Jeffrey Epstein's island is being sold. I will be watching this story with a very keen eye. Like what happens? Yeah. I wonder if anything we predicted here on the show like might happen. We predicted nothing. No, I know. Um, well, those are the Fast Five stories. I feel as though you needed to know them. Mm-hmm. And today's episode is truly far from over because it's Dear Toasters. And that's just the best. Usually on Wednesdays. Used to be on Tuesdays. I don't know. I'm like feeling very all over the place. But today I wanted to do it because I feel like you really do give good advice. Mm. And um, it's brought to you by ZocDoc, a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, takes your insurance, and are available whenever you need them. You can read up on local doctors, get verified patient reviews, see what other real humans had to say about their visit. So that when you walk into the doctor's office, you're set up to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com, choose a time slot, and whether you want to see the doctor in person, do a video visit, and then just like that, you're booked. Every month, millions of people are using ZocDoc. We're one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to find and book a doctor. And since I travel so much for work, it's stunning because you've never had strep throat in the middle of Detroit and your phone is literally your best friend getting you amoxicillin. Like, uh, ZocDoc is perfect for anyone. It really is helpful in finding good doctors in your network so you can pay with insurance. Um, They take insurance, they understand your needs, and they're available when you can see them. ZocDoc is pain-free. Go to ZocDoc.com slash toast and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today, and a lot of them are available within 24 hours. Mm. That's ZocDoc.com slash toast, ZocDoc.com slash toast. Mm. Okay, ready for Dear Toasters? Yes. Our advice segment where you can write in totally anonymously, and we will give you our best advice, help you get through whatever you're going through. If you ever want to write in, it's DearToasters at gmail.com. Dear Claudia and Jackie, or the guest... That's you. Oh, ow. I'm going to just poke myself in the eye. Okay. I'm a single girl in my 30s trying to find love on the apps again. Mm. I matched with this guy a few weeks ago, and we have plans to go on a date in two weeks. If I'm being honest, he was a 6 out of 10 in looks from his Tinder profile, but he seemed like an overall great guy that we might have some similar interests. The problem is, I did some online stalking, and I found his Facebook where I scanned through his photos and found him to be more like a 4 out of 10 looks-wise. I know this sounds shallow, but now I'm second-guessing the date. He took the initiative to pick the time and place, and he seems like a great guy who really wants to meet me. But I have a gut feeling there will not be an attraction on my end when we meet. Mm. What should I do? Do I still go and give it a shot, or do I follow my shallow gut and not waste my time? Sincerely, a 30-something girl who's not getting any younger. Okay, I have a few things to say. The first thing is that you should 100% go on this date because, one, nothing bad really can come from a date. Like, it's always good practice to go on a date. You met him online, so just make sure you go somewhere public. Make sure you know nothing 
scary can happen. But if it's just like a standard date, there's nothing really bad that can happen. It's always good to, you know, practice up on your dating skills. And you really never know. And the thing is with looks, I just don't believe in looks, you know? Like, a person is as beautiful in your eyes. It really is true. Like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What do they say? Beauty is in the eye, eye of, of the beholder. beholder. Like, when you meet someone and you have great vibes, like, you will think that they're good looking. Like, I really firmly believe that. And I just, I think that, like, the beauty standard, unless he's, like, a gremlin, <laughs> but, like, the beauty standard is just, like, not real. Like, I just think you should 100% go on this date. Yes. And I've heard a million stories of girls like, oh, man, I almost didn't go. And then, you know, like they were saying that at the wedding. Like, yeah. you almost didn't go. And then you fell in love. So like, you never know. Yeah. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, one, if you agree to go on a date, go on the fucking mm-hmm. date. It's really, really Means fucked to up to cancel dates. And I know it usually happens on the, at least I hear it on the guy side. The guy canceled the date on the girl. It's not nice. So you mean. agree to go on a date, go on a date. Worst thing, It's dinner. You want you were gonna eat anyways. Yeah, you, or might you were not gonna have see to a pay. movie. You might not have to pay. Yeah, or if you do, you were gonna pay for dinner anyways because yeah. you're single. It's true. You needed to pay. <laughs> you, you don't eat for free. No, it's true. So, so go on the date. Um, I would say, don't go into it with a bad attitude. Like looking for your boyfriend, go into it like looking to have a good time. Yeah. Because I totally agree with you that you absolutely can fall in love with someone. And end up finding them attractive that you didn't, but not if you're going into it looking to date them. It's more if you're going into it looking to be their friend, and then all of a sudden it turns into something more. Yeah, okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do, but like, sure. Yeah, I do, I do, I do. The only, look, if two people are trying to date, they need to be physically attracted to each other. No, but you never know. She hasn't even met the guy yet. No, but the stories about how you have like one that's significantly better looking than the other is always, oh, they were best friends in high school and they grew together and now they're married. Right, right, right. Or, oh, they were best friends here, best friends there. It's very rare that you have two people that are on opposite ends of the look spectrum falling madly head over heels in love the minute that they meet when they were intending to date. So you think she should go into this looking for a friend? I think that she should go into this looking for really good conversation <laughs> okay. and see if he's really funny and if she finds that physically attractive. Also, keep in mind that like boys don't care about photos. They don't edit them. They just like get well, tagged. Well, clearly this guy does. No. Because his like, Tinder she, profile, she's saying, is much better than his Not others. much better. We went from a 6 out of 10 to a 4 out of 10. Like, That's a lot. No, it's not. I just think like, just go. Just go, okay? Definitely go. Go. If you want, if you want to date and you want to end up in a relationship, you got to leave your house. Definitely go. Also, if you agreed to the date before you started stalking him, why don't you stalk him? What's the point? You're right. Going anyways. Yeah. You're only Curiosity setting yourself. You're only setting yourself up for failure. A hundred percent. Leave it alone. Also, did you find it on Facebook? Because if it's Facebook, he probably hasn't updated them in nine years. She said Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I just don't think guys' social media is ever accurate of how they look. Sp- Facebook, certainly. Yeah. Instagram, they're always like just taking pictures of like like sunsets. Like it's not a thing. I don't even know what that means. Well, not you. Okay. Next up. Okay. Hey, girlies. Ben. Mm-hmm. I live and die for this podcast, so it only makes sense to solicit advice from the two most beautiful, stunning, and smart girls around. That's us. That's beautiful. Okay. So my boyfriend of eight years and I recently moved in together. He's a total pee mm. But of course, moving in together sheds light on habits that each other has that we may not have been aware of before. Mm. And I think I found his only major flaw. Ooh. He's a booger flicker. Aren't we all? They're everywhere. Now, don't get me wrong. Everyone's got to pick their nose. I'll admit, even I do it sometimes. But I always make sure to use a tissue to keep everything hygienic. But I'm finding this man's boogers everywhere. On Mm. walls, dressers, Mm. blinds. Literally every day I find a booger. Mm. In the least place, in the place I least expect it to. Mm. The first one, one or two times, I pointed it out to him and called him gross and we both laughed about it. But now it's reaching a disgusting level and I'm not sure what I can do. He's my future husband and I love him to pieces, but this is going too far and frankly, it's making me look at him in a different light. Mm. Any advice on how I can bring it up more seriously to him and maybe help him develop more sanitary nose picking habits? Mm. Thank you. Number one. Are you feeling shame? Buy a magic eraser. They're great. Are you feeling shame right now? I'm not feeling shame because, because you... It sounds t- like I wrote this in. Yeah. Well, you also are like the biggest nose picker on the planet. And did you ever see my boogers anywhere? No. No, because I'm clean. I understand. You, I don't care if you pick your nose. Live I your life. So I I'm don't, actually a big fan of normalizing nose picking. Like, it's, it's what we got to do. But so you to- and your boogers so on the I, shower wall, and the bedroom so wall, I totally, everywhere, on furniture, I t- on luggage, on my mirror, everywhere. I totally disagree with normalizing nose picking. They create sinus infections and get dirt 
up in the sinus cavity. It's actually a terrible so thing. So stop to doing nose it. Pick. You pick your nose all the time. No, I sneeze without covering my mouth all the time. That is why you'll often find my boogers, not often, occasionally find my boogers often. on a shower wall because when I'm in the shower and I need to sneeze, I literally went in the middle of this podcast to go and take a Zyrtec. I'm clearly an unwell man. You need to see I someone. I needed to sneeze. You need to so see someone. I sneezed. And I guess a booger left my nose and hit the wall. So how does it make you feel that your wife... Oh, but by the way, we're talking about... We should be talking about her. No, I'm talking about me now. Okay, fine. How does it feel that your wife, who works so hard to make this house a home, who loves you, who works hard at her job and comes home and cleans and does the groceries, has to spend some time out of her week with her magic eraser, scrubbing your bloody boogers off the wall? Like, how does that make you feel as a man? It makes me feel like we're even because when you get in bed, you don't leave for nine hours and I'm your personal slave. So <laughs> I'm sorry it's... that I occasionally sneeze and a booger ends up rogue. It's not occasionally. Like, it's a lot. Okay. Did you write this? <laughs> Shockingly, I didn't. Okay. Well, what's our advice to this girl? We have to give her advice. Advi How to bring it. Like, Ad honestly, you have to talk to them like. No, advice to her. Yeah, by the way. Just leave it. Leave it. I keep dropping this book. Advice to her is... It's, it's not like a, <laughs> so funny that there's boogers. Like, say, look, man, I don't like cleaning up your boogers. Please do your best to not do that. Like, have it be a Okay, little... I'm going to take your advice. Look, man, I don't like cleaning up your boogers. Please do your best to not do that. Look, man, I don't like getting up in the middle of the night to get you a fucking seltzer. <laughs> how about you get up and get your own fucking seltzer? Again, no. if there's a good trade... Right, right, right. I don't know the circumstance in their relationship. Yeah. If this man is waiting on that woman hand and foot, <laughs> two in the morning, I need Advil. Two in the morning, I need seltzer. Two in the morning, I need a Ritz cracker. <laughs> then I think the trade of the occasional using the magic eraser to peel a booger off the wall is not as egregious. Right. But like, if this man is not waiting on this woman hand and foot, she waits on him hand and foot and has the occasional booger to peel off with a magic eraser. <laughs> yeah. Then it's a problem. Okay, I think that's a good analysis. Fair. Yeah, relationships are all about balance. They know? are. Yeah. One booger equals two seltzers. <laughs> 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 okay, our third and final dear toasters is something we've never had here before. We have had a boyfriend write in wow. for his girlfriend. Uh oh. Hey girls, Ben, I'm a boyfriend mm. and hopefully a pee jam. And I'm a boyfriend of a huge listener, fan, toaster of your podcast. And I wanted to write in on her behalf because she has vented about this issue to me for months. Mm. Quick background. My girlfriend moved to a new city, so we're long distance now. And we oh. ended up moving it, and she ended up moving in with a friend. In her previous city, she lived alone and enjoyed it. But rent was a lot more in the new city. So she decided to live with a friend who has a dog. Mm. Fast forward to now, and her roommate has been traveling for work and or pleasure. And it seems like she's doing it at least two weeks every month. The issue is, my, instead of uh, boarding her dog or finding a rotation of friends who may watch the dog, she always, quote, asks my girlfriend to take care of it, never asking if it's okay with her or schedule. It's the assumption, you know, mm. like, you'll watch my dog. Mm. The roommate has given zero amounts of money to compensate, but there have also been damages the dogs has caused that have not been rectified as well. This guy's mm. definitely a lawyer. Mm. My girlfriend loves this dog and is good enough friends with her roommate that she put up with it for a couple months, but now it's past the point of being, inconsider of being inconsiderate in our opinion. I've suggested that she just talk to her head on about it, but I know that probably that's probably the guy in me and would probably make her living situation awkward. Mm. I'm just the boyfriend and I know my place to stay out of it, but I hate to see her getting taken advantage of. Mm. Do you girls have any tips slash suggestions on how she should approach slash address the issue with her roommate, boarding, more payment that is agreed upon, or just pull a Nancy and be like, no. P.S. Mm. You should make, wait, you should make a male translated map. Oh, you should make a male translated map slash key of all your acronyms. It took me way too long to figure out what PJAMA stands for. Thanks in advance. Okay, this is tough. Like, she, this girl's definitely being taken advantage of, and honestly, like, she just has to be like, no. So, what I would say is if it's not your dog, you should not have to watch it for free multiple for two weeks, weeks yeah. a month. Yeah, it's insane. Because no matter how much you love the dog, it's a burden. at the end of the day, it's a burden. Responsibility. 100%. And we know you can't enjoy a day out necessarily, or you can't go away for a weekend, or you can't because 
beautiful pooches have needs. Yeah, and I would, they rely on us to go to the bathroom, etc. If so, the girlfriend's listening to this, I would tell you you're being totally taken advantage of and you're being taken for a ride, getting free um, like dog sitting. Yeah. So either talk to her about it and be like, honestly, like you don't even ask anymore, and like it's kind of a big responsibility, and like I have a life too. Or you could just take the route of being like a bitch and being like, no. And you would be totally justified in doing that, too. What I would... That that works. What I would say is, just to the first question, boarding? Fuck no. Yeah, don't, no. Uh, don't have the dog. If you're going to board the dog two weeks out of the well, year... That's the thing. Like, don't, if, don't have a dog. If you don't have, like, a good backup plan... Like, I feel... We feel... We're very blessed that, like... When we travel, either for work or for pleasure, like, Theo has a safe place that he arguably likes better than our house. Yeah. And that's your parents. Yeah, and if we didn't have that, he would come with us. Right, like, if you like, don't have I would, a good... I would, I would never, ever, ever board Theo. Two weeks. Well, I wouldn't board him at all. Yeah, boarding, you never know what goes down at those places. I, like, not, it's always better to leave with a family or a friend. I'm not a fan. But if you have to, figure out a situation, which, I mean, figure out a solution, because... Clearly, clearly, you have a situation on your hands. Figure out how much it would have been to board the dog. This is one option. And then get compensated for it. But maybe she shouldn't pat her pockets. No, that I would just, be weird. No, I just don't think this girl who has a dog should be traveling two weeks out of the month when she doesn't have a real yeah, but maybe plan. She, but maybe she asked you for work. So what she should do is she should find a dog walker that can walk the dog. You know, like... They should have a conversation about it. Yeah, no, like, it's not this Find girl's problem. Honestly, this girl did not, doesn't have a dog, and dogs are responsibilities. That's true, And too. it's not her fucking responsibility. It's not a problem. Since when she moved into an apartment and got this big job. That sucks. It's not your fucking fault. No. So either start making up a lot of excuses. Like, she's going to be like, oh, I'm walking, well, I'm leaving, can you watch Molly? No, actually, I'm going to a farm upstate with my boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, I can't. My boyfriend's coming to visit, and we're staying at a hotel. Oh, no, I can't. I'm going to visit my boyfriend. Like, and by the way, clearly this woman doesn't give a shit about her dog. Yeah, like, you should offer. I have another idea. Take the dog. Take the dog. I'm taking the dog. The dog's now Dumbass. yours. Yeah. Say that's if good. you're gonna leave it with me two weeks of the year, it's my dog. Yeah. No. That's that's good. I'm so happy to take care of it. Yeah. But it's my dog. It's irresponsible. My dog. Like you have to be able to live your life and also have a dog, of course. But you also have to have like a safe place for the dog. The dog is not an afterthought. Like no, it's my dog. You need a family member, a friend who cares about the dog, someone you trust. It's my dog now. Yeah. I think that's the most. I think you should take the dog. My dog now. But you're definitely being taken advantage of, so do one of the things we said. Yeah. And you have a Pigeon boyfriend, so like... Yeah, nice that's guy. All, that's all that matters. Like, nice he guy. rode into Dear Toasters. And seems he like a nice guy. Yeah, he's a man of taste and uh -huh. style and values. Yes. That was Dear Toasters. If you ever want to write in, it's deartoasters at gmail.com. That was our show. Ben, thank you for joining us. Thank you, darling. I love you very much. I love you more. We're back tomorrow for Friday's episode with Hannah Burner, first time gal on the podcast. Then cool. we have a whole other week. I actually have the next couple weeks already scheduled with second night guests so many mm. of you that you guys have requested so if you all have requested specific people like i most likely got them mm. so don't worry um tomorrow with hannah burner i'm excited to talk to her and that's all she wrote cool thank you so much for listening to the morning toast the millennial morning show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every monday through friday on youtube so if you're watching this on youtube please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up we're also available as a podcast and we're podcast can be found so at spotify itunes stitcher public radio iheart radio Castbox, all the places so wherever you listen to podcasts find us morning toast leave a five star review about how beautiful stunning and smart we are hope you guys have an amazing day and we'll see you tomorrow bye <laughs>